Okay guys, so in this tutorial we're just going to go through how we can make a door uh, to fit into our wall segment. Uh, we're just going to cover a couple of different uh, tools and techniques and stuff while we're in here. So what we should have at the minute, if you've been following kind of step by step, um, is you have a basic wall, a wall with a uh, hole in it for a door, a corner wall segment, one for a window. Okay, and what I've got there is just, I think just another example when I was I was working on. So this here is my, my finished one, hopefully from like one of the last tutorials. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is just over here on the left hand side, I've kind of got everything that's in my scene. I'm just going to grab this biped and just kind of throw him out of the way a little bit, because he's just kind of sitting a bit in the way. Um, okay, so this kind of came up in a uh, lesson with my students this week. Um, so I thought it would just be a handy way just to bring in just a different tool that we're going to use. So basically what we want to do is we want to make a door that fits exactly into the shape here. And uh, what one of the students had asked me was, how can we get the the ruler tool or the measuring tool? Um, so I just thought I'll just bring into this tutorial as well. Okay, so uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a box. There's two ways. We can measure it first or we can make the box first. I'm going to make the box first. Um, and just we'll just throw it in any old size. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Okay, so um, to make a ruler, or like a measuring tool in 3D Studio Max. You just come up to the Create menu. We're going to go to Helpers. And then we're going to go to Tape Measure. Okay. Um, now what I've done here is I've just made sure I've turned on my snaps. My snaps are set to Vertex as well. Okay, so to make a ruler, all I do is click and drag. And you see what it's done is, because I've got my snap point on, it snapped it between there and there. Okay, and there's the length. Of what I just measured okay so um, I mean you don't have to you don't have to write it down because um, you can always come back and read sentence later on okay but just so we have a look here it's uh, 200 uh, point eight two two which is a bit of a weird measurement but we want to be super accurate when we make our door that's the only size we want to do uh, the next one we might want to grab is the width of the door okay so again I've still got that tool selected all I'm going to do is just click and drag and because I've got my snap on I can actually measure like diagonal distances and stuff as well so from there to there that's fine and from there you see it's a hundred point four five okay so hundred point four five so when you're done with that tool you can right click anywhere just to get rid of it and if you want to come back into the settings your tape one is there uh, and I just click on the modify tab and I can see what settings it has. Okay. Um, and then tape two is just there and that's 100.45. So now when I come into my my box that I made, I know now that I can start messing around with these settings. Okay, so uh, 200.822 should be the height. Yep. Uh, what? I should have said I want to set, or sorry, length. In this case, would be the depth. I want to set that at around ten. Make quite, make quite an hour. We can always change it later on. And then for what we want to go for, I think it was a hundred and four. But let me just double check. Sorry, a hundred point forty-five centimeters. Okay, so back in here, just under my modify, I've got my parameters at the top. And a hundred point twenty-four. There you go. Right. So you can keep those tape measures there if you want. Um, you can actually just rename them and stuff if you want it as well. Like you could call this door width. Um, but I'm kind of done with them. I don't think I need them anymore. So I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to get rid of them. Okay, so just going to click and hit delete. And that's them gone. Um, so from the, from the last couple of tutorials, um, you might be familiar just with the pivot point. So what I want to do for this is I'm just going to change the pivot just to this bottom corner here before I start putting the door into place. Okay, uh, so I'm just going to go to hierarchy, effect pivot only. I've got my snaps on, I've set the vertex, I'm just going to shift it down to that corner there. Okay, and that's just if I wanted to rotate this door or make any changes, it, it just helps to have it set to that point. Okay, so from there, we're just going to start maybe just modifying this mesh a little bit. Um, so if we hold down a right click, go convert to, and uh, we want to work in a editable poly. Okay. Now, I'm not a hundred percent sure on what type of uh, door 
I'm planning on doing. So I just grabbed some uh, reference images off textures.com, so cgtextures.com. I'm thinking something a little bit like this, okay? So I'm not too worried about the brackets for the time being. This is what I'm more concerned about, is this kind of shape here, and then that kind of shape at the bottom. And just doing a nice little bit of insetting to get some nice details. And then maybe in a later tutorial, we'll come along and make a door handle and put that into place. Okay, so this is gonna be real quick. Um, it's actually like a really, really fast tutorial. Um, so I'm thinking the best thing to do probably first would be, I'm gonna split the door in to kind of uh, not exactly half but like a 70 70 30 split okay so i'm going to grab i'm in uh, edge mode i'm going to grab these edges here just use our connect tool so i want one i just want one connection that looks fine um i'm just going to slide it down so just around there okay so i'm using the setting of minus 37 we could probably go for minus 35 yeah and then we'll just okay that Right, so from here, uh, we're just gonna switch into polygon mode. I'm gonna grab this front polygon here. I'm gonna grab the back polygon. So I'm gonna hold down control and click to add in a selection. So now I'm just working on two polygons at a time. Uh, we're gonna go for the little inset on these. Uh, we're gonna inset it more than a centimeter. So we'll probably look at maybe, let's do quite a large inset, like 10. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, yeah, 10 looks about right. Let's go for maybe 8. There we go. So, 8 on an inset on that. Okay, that's fine. Um, we're going to do the same for the bottom section. So, we're going to okay that. So, grab that side, hold the control, grab the back, and we're just going to do another inset there. You'll remember our last settings that we used anyway, so that's fine. We can hit okay for that there we go right um so from here um i want to show uh um, just basically a little technique is we want to grab i want this to be kind of a little bit narrower but i want to keep that 10 at the top okay so um, I'm in edge mode. I'm going to click and drag a marquee just over these selections here. And I'm just going to spin around the back just to make sure I've gone all the way through. That's fine. And I'm going to hold down control and click and drag over these ones as well. All right. Okay, so I've got the edges selected there. Um, and all I'm going to do is just make sure I've got the same on the back. That looks fine. And I'm just going to hold down control and click on vertex mode. So now it remembers. It converts my selection basically from edge into vertex mode so it knows which edge is here had those vertices attached to them so you hold down control and just click um, so what we're going to do now is just go to the scale tool and we're just going to scale in one direction okay and just take it a little bit just to make it a little bit narrower okay so that looks fine Okay, so from here we're going to um, we're going to inset again. Okay, so if we are in face mode, um, we're going to inset that once more. We're not going to go with quite as high a one. Um, maybe we'll go with four. I know so I'm only doing this on one side, and there'll be a reason why. I'm going to explain in a second. I'm going to OK that. I'm just going to go to my move tool. Just in the z-axis, I'm going to turn off my snap. Uh, sorry, just in the y-axis, I'm just going to push it back a little bit. So you get that little, little kind of angle there. Okay. So get that little angle, fine. And then from here, uh, we're just going to do a slight extrude. Obviously, we want it to be minus, so we'll go for maybe minus two. Try that. That looks okay. So we're going to okay that. So now we're going to inset again. So you notice I'm doing this on both at the same time. So we're going to inset again. That's all right. And now we're going to extrude again, but this time we're going to come out. 
Okay, so we're not going to go minus 2, we're just going to go 2 centimeters. That's about right. Okay, maybe 1, we'll try to get away with 1. Okay, and then we're going to OK that. Right, so that's fine. That's not too bad. Right, uh, from there I'm just going to change the vertex mode a second. I'm going to go to scale. And I'm going to scale these vertices a little bit. No, actually, I won't. I'm thinking it might look a little bit weird. Yeah, I'll be fine. Right, okay. I'll do it in face mode, actually, so I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll do it in face mode. So just going to flick into face mode. Just going to undo that. I'll talk you through what I'm doing. Um, we're in face mode here. And I'm just in the scale tool. And I'm just going to scale it down a little bit in the z-axis, a little tiny bit. I'm going to scale it in a little bit in the x. Okay, and the reason I'm doing that is because you get that little, that little kind of dent. Okay, if we go the whole way back, you could have done that as part of your extrusion as well. Okay, it's just that as an afterthought, I kind of thought it would be sort of a good idea. Okay, so some people might do it as part of their extrusion, just add it on. Um, it just depends what way, what way you guys fancy working. Okay, so it's not necessary. You don't have to do it if you don't want to, but you could just. Down there, like that, a little bit, and then scale it up. Okay, right. Um, so you notice we're halfway through there. I stopped modifying the back of the door. Um, there's a couple reasons for that. One is I think we don't need it um, to be that detailed if we don't want. Okay, so I thought it'd give us an option just to have that version of the door if we don't want to do the other one. Also, you could clean up kind of probably a lot of these faces and get rid of some of these extra edges. Um, the main reason was I wanted to show you how to do just basically a different tool, okay? Um, so what we're gonna do is go into polygon mode and we are going to delete all these polygons. Make it go back a little bit. Okay, so it should be hollow. Should be hollow right about there. Okay, so from here I'm just gonna I'm just going to have a double check of my pivot point just to make sure it's in the right place. Okay. Let's go on the scale tool. So turn on my snaps and I'm just going to make sure it was in the right place. There you go. That's fine. All right. So that's okay. Um, so there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, quite a common way that people do is they use the mirror tool. All right. And the mirror tool asks you kind of what, what direction you want to mirror an axis. Okay, so it should be uh, Y axis. Okay, and then they ask them, what do you want to do? Do you want to make a copy? Do you want to make a copy? And you can see now what happens. Um, it, I set that to Y, I set it to make a copy, and then it's actually cloned the door for me. Okay, now the problem there is that's actually still two objects. Okay, so you see here it's box six and box seven. Um, so that's quite handy, um, quite handy way of doing it. You could then later attach them if you wanted. Uh, another way of doing it um, is to use symmetry. So come to the modifier list and just ty start typing the word symmetry. There it is there. Okay, now straight away this might work properly, uh, just straight out of the box. You might need to tweak these parameters over here. So you see that it's done the same thing again where it's tried to mirror um, and it's tried to do it in the wrong axis. I want to tell it to do in the Y axis. And you know straight away it's kind of gone a bit crazy. Okay, so if I just tick on, if your model disappears, if you tick on flip, um, you can modify it that way. Another nice tool that you can do here is, this will always mirror it off your center point. So it's always using that there as your um, as your middle ground. Okay, so if you say, I want to do it in the y-axis, it, it figures out what center point is, and then it goes to the y-axis. So if this here, you can actually come in, you can go to your mirror setting, and you can start tweaking this. So I've got my snap obviously turned on. I might want to shrink down that door. Okay, just by coming into symmetry and then just underneath the mirror. So you're basically changing where that mirror point is. Okay, so whenever you're happy with that, um, you can hold down your right click, 
and convert it back to an editable poly. And from here, we just want to double check where our pivot is, still in the right position. Just to be sure, I'm going to move it out, turn on my snap, and I'll snap it in the right place. And then from here now, we're just going to shift this door back. I might need to be in a better view to do this. So nice kind of low poly door, um, just kind of using a couple of different techniques that we've covered already, but just using them a little bit differently to get like a better effect. So just depend on your game, depend on what your polygon count is and stuff like that. You might decide that you want to model these details in, or you might use a normal map, but that there straight away is a really good basis for us to use. Uh, in one of the later tutorials, we'll probably come back and we might make a little door handle for that as well. Okay. Um, so if there's any issues or anything, just let me know, just write in the comments. Um, obviously, if you just join. Um, but obviously, yeah, like, subscribe, all that stuff. And um, if you have any suggestions, stuff you'd like me to try and make, obviously just chuck it in the comments box as well. Cheers.